Look, Ma, no hands. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Dorks and Bolts. My name is Andres, and in this episode, I'm gonna show you how to code for uh, the PMA uh, module and the sensors for the parking maneuver assistance of BMW. Last time we left off by finishing all the wiring that goes inside the car, but I did find something that might be very useful because um, as you remember, I had a couple of brackets in the bumper that I had to drill a hole and it was not the previous. So in this one, I'll show you how to replace those for the actual OEM LCI bumper brackets. Uh, just these are the M Sport ones. Just if you have non M Sport bumpers, you have to be aware of that. So let's get on with it. All right. So here we go. Uh, how does that song go? I, I hope we don't get copyrighted, but it's like here I go again on my own. Removing this stupid bumper once and for all, I hope. And if you guys are enjoying our content and everything we do here, it would be appreciated enormously if you could just give us a like, comment, and if you subscribe to our channel and put that notification bell so you don't miss any episodes or anything that we do here. It would really, really help us keep going. Thank you so much, guys. You know, sometimes when I'm doing this kind of things, I wonder, and I actually get asked this quite a bit with people that reach me through social media or WhatsApp or stuff like that. It's like, why are you doing all this? And the only thing I can think of, I am just remember of Ferruccio Lamborghini, who said, I have never stopped thinking about the ideal motor car. All I had to do was construct a plant to build it. Well, this garage is my plant and I'm building my perfect car. So, yeah. As you can see, our holes were not successful enough. We even took out this, the, the bracket. It's still attached to the sensor. That's why we need to do something better with this. This is the hole that I made last time and definitely not good enough. Comparison time. This is the new part. This is our old part that will make this beautiful piece of work. But yeah, I was not happy with that. So I just got the new LCI part. We are gonna have to transfer the siren for the alarm into our new part. And the other side has this dent, which will allow us to mount it instead of that piece of junk. <laughs> now we have our sensors free and I wanted to show you this. These are the radars that I just got. You have to install this bracket that holds it. It's right here and the sense, the radar. These radars that I bought came with the plug here, so I don't have to find a way to create this. I just have to attach the actual cables and get them inside. I'm just following the path going into the trunk. And I have both of them already set up. This one, that one is the master and this is called the slave. And yeah, it's just, you touch this bracket here, put it in there, and that's it. I will, I will attach this entire harness to, maybe I'll make create a different one, or maybe I'll just attach it to the PDC, PMA sensors. And here on the side, we have already set mounted our new um, trim, which has place for our sensor. So we are not like making holes on it. So we mounted our, Siren, and we'll put it back in the car. <clears throat> we are going to have to strip the double-sided tape on these holders and put new ones so we can 
install it correctly now. So I'm just gonna pick up my knife and cut it like an apple. I mean, it seems quite okay. Not too hard to do. Any bets that I will cut myself? <laughs> or at least stuff myself a couple of times? Okay, not so bad. And this is not perfect by any means, but it will do. We just need to make sure that it sits flat on the on the bumper. We put new double-sided tape. It's not pretty, but you know we can keep putting lipstick on the pig until the end of days. But this will do. Yeah, we have installed our sensors back. They're already in there. So. The only thing left to do <clears throat> is to install the bumper. Okay, now that we have everything connected in the back and the front, everything is wired, we need to do two more little things. The first one is that we need to install the pulse generators in the front driver side wheel and the one in the passenger back wheel. So that is something that I'll show you this parts here or here and you need to replace those wires. Replacing those wires is quite easy you just have to in the back of the car well you have to remove the wheel and then remove the cover and the, like the lining Find the plug, just unclip it, and then just follow the path where this wire is going to. You'll have to go through one, and here number two, just remove that torque screw and take out the plug. On the front is the same situation. You just have two clips, which are number two here, that you just have to remove from some sort of like clips, and screw number uh, one, and then just pull out number two. Also, you need to make sure that your ABS pump is the right one because otherwise you will need to get one of these ones and if you can see here, it has to be uh, here, DCS MK100 basis minimum. If you don't have this one, then you'll have to replace the whole pump as well as the ICM module. Uh, the part number is somewhere in there, but I'll put it, I'll put it somewhere, oh, there it is, here. This is the part number, but I'll put it in the, uh, somewhere in the video. Just make sure you have the right pump. What about the coating? Come on. We connect to the car, I connect it through ICOM, and as usual, we're gonna first thing, read the FA. which is gonna give us the list of options that the car has there. And we are gonna read our modules that the car has installed at the moment. Then we're gonna save the FA on any file, just in case what, something happens. Right after that, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna edit. And as usual, we're gonna go to the other um, editor screen open up the three branches and look for our options. Here we're gonna add 5DP. We apply the options and then we save our file. Once our file has been saved, we need to write this FA into the car. So we are gonna go to the VCM or actually first, let's check that the options are still there. So we open the uh, file and we look that 5DP is listed and it is there. So now we're good and we can go to the five um, to the VCM to write the options in the actual car. So first thing we're gonna activate. This is gonna calculate or all the options that we have in the car. And now we need to know the I step that we are uh, the, let's say the software modules in the car. So we pick up that date, we write the FA, 
We wait until they tell us in the corner that the FA has been written to the car. And now we scroll all the way down to find our PMA module. In my case, as you know, I took the PMA2 because I wanted to have reverse and parallel parking at the same time. So I have it there. And if you notice, in your installation, probably that CFAD file is not going to be there. So we need to inject it. How do we do that? We just click this button called Detect CAF for SWE. And there's going to be a pop-up that you are going to see this one that I had as an example. This is not exactly the one, but I, it's important that you see it clearly. So in there, you are going to see the dates and we are going to pick the one closer to the one that we picked up from the previous screen. And then this module is going to appear there. We are going to code it. And that's now our PMA is enabled and ready to be coded for the rest of the car. Then the next thing we're going to do is that we are going to look for the DCM module, sorry, the DSC module, and we're going to code it. We're going to follow with the REM, our rear electronics module. We're going to code it as well. Then once that's done, we're going to scroll all the way up to our MBT and we are coding that as well. Finally, we're gonna look for our camera module, the TRSVC. So we're gonna code that as well. And finally, the ICM. That's all we need to do. So now that all has been said and done, it is just time to go and test the car, drive around, and most important of all, see if we can park it without doing anything, maybe it can park by itself. So let's go do that. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Our parking sensors are working. We just have to press this and it will enable it. We put it on, we activate our parking. And now the radars are looking for a parking spot, which is right here on my right. And see, look ma, no hands. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Exactly perfect between the lines. And we're good. So we are looking for a spot. And as you can see, our map is looking. And there's a spot right here. And we have the thing telling us that there's one right there. But I don't want to take that one. So now it should detect that there's another one right there. And there it is. So stop vehicle. Put it in reverse. Move our hands of it. And there we go. There we go, there we go, we're doing it, we're doing it. And here we come. That's, that's scary because it gets really, really close. But anyway, the car has detected that we're good. So we're driving forward. And that's it. We're done. We're a little far from the curve just because, well, there's kind of like snow and obviously it's not good for us, but we did it. No hands. So the only thing you need to have press this button right here 
and immediately you'll see the parking sensors coming up. So we finally made it. It was a long and, well, it wasn't that painful, but it was a long journey to get to this point. But now you can enjoy these sensors. This is obviously an option that you're gonna, not gonna use a lot, but sometimes it can come handy when there's a tight spot or you just don't feel like doing too much effort. But I'm extremely proud that I actually made work in the car and next time we'll finish with the installation of the radars for the lane change warning and so the triangles on the uh, on the sides so until next time bye